what is first input delay in Core Web Vitals and how you can optimize your website. In this video session, I'm going to briefly simplify what first input delay is so that your website can take advantage of the latest algorithm change Google is about to make. First input delay measures interactivity. Now, most people confuse the first input delay between the entire page load times. Core Web Vitals has three distinct areas and first input delay is one of them. Let's imagine this scenario. Every website has menu structure, for example. Right? The interactivity then is if I hover over this menu link, something happened. That means I'm interacting with the menu structure. See? Yeah. Some websites and their menu structure may be drop down menus like this, or it could be complex e commerce category structure, and so on. So if someone interacts with it, the delay between the response to that interaction is my first input delay. Okay, now that's navigation structure example. But let's imagine a search function. Let's imagine keyword research. Yeah, let me press on this search button. Yeah, the entire search function has completed, correct? That is not first input delay. Let me show you another example because now it'll make more sense. Let's imagine a contact form and someone interacts with it by pressing on it. I want you to note what happens when I click on it. You'll see a little form processing circle just below it here. Take a note of that because between the time that I'm going to press this to my landing page, showing that is the first input delay. Let's press. You see, that's my first input delay, not the complete form process. That's not the first input delay. Now, knowing that each of your landing pages will have you know, consistency in a sense that, let's say your web pages will have similar functionality, correct? If you operate an e-commerce site, your product URLs will have similar functionality. If you are blogging, you'll have commenting section, for example. When you want to optimize your website for Core Web Vitals and page experience update, you need to cater for these major parts of your website, not necessarily just your home page. Yeah. Knowing that Core Web Vitals uh, help section provides more insights. Now, the best way to measure first input delay is actually using the freely available tools such as PageSpeed Insights. Once again, don't just test your homepage, but rather test certain parts of your website. Okay, that's very important because page experience update is all about the entire website. So now when we use PageSpeed Insights, here we'll have first input delay. What Core Web Vitals are suggesting to us is that websites should be loading the first input delay, as in the, the delay between that interaction, should be 100 milliseconds. In this example, amazon.com.au, that's a very large website with a lot of functionality, as we can see. So that means anytime someone interacts with this landing page, or any other landing page on this website, 
the page speed insights now shows us as far as the test is concerned here only one percent is as we can see it's more than 100 milliseconds as in it's greater than 300 milliseconds and yet 95 percent of that first input delay that's actually in, on the green side right so when you look at your own website well ideally you, you just 100 percent first input delay being all green but that is cumbersome to accomplish for most websites so therefore although 100 millisecond is the guiding number so to speak you need to reevaluate as to how your web pages load because once you take care of the page speed of your own website then naturally you'll have better score all around not necessarily just the first input delay make sense so how do you then optimize you optimize it by there is many many different ways to optimize that first input delay if it's more than 300 milliseconds for example but nonetheless it has to be optimized the way that you could do it you could defer certain scripts you could identify what the interaction is you could you could do so many things i can't explain what they are here but rather just show you perhaps the common scenarios your content management system if it's really really slow then you have to optimize one way or another if you rely on google rankings including google ads as well because the change that's about to happen it's gonna unbelievably affect the results that google is bringing to a website that means if for example your website entirely when you test certain parts of it is let's say loading in seven seconds ten seconds because that could happen if that's the case your ranking drop will be so drastic at that moment you'll be thinking okay now i have to optimize it and yet core web vitals and page experience by google has given enough time for website owners to stop and say okay how is my website performing as i've said you can reevaluate your content management system and then you can run many tests such as page speed insights there is another one called measure by web.dev which is web vitals information can be learned here you can measure your url certain parts of it you can reevaluate your entire website in a sense let's imagine you're using many plugins can you accomplish the same functionality perhaps by using other methods that could be an option makes sense you could even remove some if you think you know what it's not really aiding my conversions or the certain functionality is not providing great user experience if that's the case you may think okay my site is loading too slow can i remove that because that could happen javascript let's imagine google analytics facebook event tracking all these are really heavy files as well you can look at your website you can compress your images but remember this fact I end up seeing many 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 plugin providers such as image compression saying to you and me that if we end up using their plugins our website will be optimized for core web vitals that is not true because if you make that honest mistake by thinking oh you know what that plugin is about seo or something to do with page experience then that's not how it works 
you need to reevaluate your website. Surely compressing images, perhaps resizing them, using lazy load so that the image only loads when it comes to the viewport. All these will aid in first input delay as well. Make sense? So you need to look at the, the holistic approach for website optimization and not necessarily just focus on first input delay or largest contentful pane or cumulative layout shift. Make sense? But rather optimize your entire website so that it provides the user experience that Google once with page experience update. Now, if you then want to find out, you know what, what is the first input delay on any web page? As I've said, you could use tools like PageSpeed Insights, but if you're a web developer or an SEO specialist, for example, then there are functions that you can use on your site to identify First input delay on its own if you want. Largest contentful pane. First contentful pane. You can use F12 Google Web Developer Toolbar. Conduct lighthouse tests. Performance tests. So you can do many, many things. As I've said, first input delay measures interactivity. And it's very, very important that any interaction that you provide on your website is not more than 100 milliseconds. While here, let me share another tip with you as to say desktop and a mobile is perhaps two different things. Meaning, if someone views this landing page using a mobile device, then the functionality changes, as we can see. Now, first input delay is then that time delay in between that interaction. That means you need to evaluate and test your website for the entire core web vital requirements using both desktop device and also mobile device because on a mobile device people may interact with your landing pages differently because they don't use their mouse on a mobile device they use their fingers makes sense so then the interaction can occur through touch events so you can re-optimize the javascript that's making certain functionality on your site work to optimize JavaScript, you would perhaps minim minify it. You may even look at, you know, let's imagine you have three or four different scripts that's downloaded to make certain functionality work. If that's the case, perhaps you could group all of them together and minimize reducing HTTP requests. You can defer the loading of JavaScript. You can do that as well. You can set certain I'll show you an example so that you see. Set timeout function for core web vitals, but not necessarily for first input delay. Because if you end up you know, loading the script, let's say, three seconds later, and then that functionality may not work. So once again, let me wrap it up. First input delay measures interactivity, and you need to be within 100 milliseconds. You can test page speed insights to see how the URL is performing in terms of first input delay, and to identify what is in that red area because a landing page can have 10 different first input delays because it could be a search function it could be comment function it could be at the cart function right so you can use measure 
then to identify the FID, you can use tools such as Data Studio, create reports, simply provide your origin URL and connect. And then you can see your first input delay according to the website you've provided as origin. You can also use Google Cloud Big Data to conduct queries, but that would be for advanced users. Nonetheless, once again, let me wrap it up. Focus on your entire website and improve the page load times for the entire website. For example, Rank Your Website has blog posts. I've recently updated the entire website. Perhaps you may like to visit and see new resources. When you're conducting tests using Chrome Developer Toolbar, you're into incognito view so that you're not seeing different results. You can do Lighthouse, select performance. You can test device mobile. Then later on, conduct another test for desktop, for example. Let's select mobile. That's the home page for rank your website. And the Lighthouse report will be 100%. Now, the reason I show you this is not to be on my chest because, because rank your YouTube channel does not do that. My aim is to simplify what is otherwise complex. And I sincerely do not want Rankia fans to miss out because of the new change that's around the corner. Simply optimize your website, focus on you know, um, search engine optimization, page load times. You can use plugins to improve the loading of the site. You can compress and resize images and rank your YouTube channel has already shown many, many different scenarios and techniques for optimizing for core web vitals. I thank you very much for learning with me and I'll talk with you in the next video session.